Okay, the purpose of this lecture is to show you how to create SPS output for lecture 18, which is a two-sample hypothesis test of means. Um, you're going to need to read this because um, I'm going to be real brief and quickly. But I did a study on drunk driving in, the, in on Oahu, and what we're going to have is two variables, and we're going to basically look and see whether um, <clears throat> people who refuse to take a breath test have more DUI arrests than those who did not refuse. Okay, and the idea behind that is that maybe people are refusing to take a test because they've been arrested before and they're trying to avoid being caught or they're more criminally savvy. Okay, again, you can do two tailed tests, which is that one. You can do one tailed test, it'll be the one using the same output. Okay, so on SPSS, basically you're going to go analyze. Compare means independent samples t-test. Okay, I'll reset that. This test variable is the variable for which you are going to compute the mean. I'm looking at the mean number of arrests, so that goes over there. If you're doing age, that would go over here. Then your grouping variable is you're going to chop up your dependent variable into two groups. If you're using gender or something, that would go down here. So you could do age and gender if you wanted. See how there's these two little question marks you need to tell SPSS how it's coded. I coded them zeros and ones. So we'll push OK. Okay, so there's the output. I want you to notice I'm going to use this. It's the same output here. Okay, but this is a little bit bigger. Okay, so the first group, there was 28 people in it. That was the mean number of arrests. These are refusers. See how that's pretty high, that mean? There was 433 who took the test. They have fewer arrests. Then SPSS does the calculations. Here, you look at the p-value here, and you see that that's 0.53. So we had failed to reject the null. That means we're going to look at the top box. There's going to be our TR for step six. Down below, I show you how you figure that out. Okay, so you'll need to read this. Okay, so I see here p is greater than 5%, therefore we fail or reject, and we look at the top line of output. So if your p-value for your Levine's test is less than 0.05, you look down here. If it's, we're calling that formula 2, we're calling the one on the top formula 1. So that p-value is just slightly bigger than 5%, that would be 5.3%, so we're going to look right here. That is our test ratio, okay? So this is what you would report in step six. Okay, again, p-value greater or equal to 0.05, look at the top box. If this p-value is less than 0.05, you look at the bottom one. Okay, so each of these are using these two different formulas. Okay, so I'm trying to keep this brief, so I'm going to stop. But that's how you find step six, TR.